Hello and welcome to From Kentucky to Tokyo. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about Le Jet Program. So I was on Jet Program for three years uh, and it was a great experience and it was a lot of fun. And I just got another question about it from a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. So it's a common question I get like, how do you get on Jet Program? What's the Jet Program all about? Did you enjoy a Jet Program? Etc. 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 So there are usually a lot of questions I get about it. So I thought I'd just make a video about it really quick. Well, there are three jobs that you can do on Jet. You can be an ALT. Sorry, an ALT is an assistant language teacher. So this one you will be helping a Japanese English teacher in a classroom teach English. And then the second one is CIR, Coordinator of International Relations. These people do translation and interpretative work for like city hall or government places and so on and so forth. Then there's a third one, the sports interpreters slash coaches. Uh, these people are way out of like, the, they, they're really hard to find. Um, they are people who need to know Japanese and need to have like a health and education requirement. Yeah, so there are very, very few of them. I met only like two of them in the entire time I was on JET program. They exist, but I don't know much about them. So I'm mainly gonna be talking about ALT for this video. It's a very common thing to talk about though, so I feel like, uh, you know, if you wanna hear about CIR or sports, sorry, I just, I can't. So how do you get uh, into being an ALT? How do you do it? Well, go to the JET program website. I'll put a link in the description. And there, go to your country that you want to apply from. Be careful, not all applications are the same. You need to get the one for your country. So the United States one for me is what I went to. So you go to the, your country's website, you fill out, or you print out the application form, and then you fill out the application form. The application form will also have like extras that you need to do. For example, a statement of purpose. This is an essay that talks about why do you want to come to Japan? what requirements do you have for this kind of job and what makes you think that you're eligible to be on jet program and so on and so forth so i i wrote that like three or four times and i had people review it i had the people who were doing my recommendations review it so you need two recommendations from like two professors to be also going with your application stuff so my professors that I chose, I actually had one of them look over my statement of purpose really quick and be like, should I add anything? And she goes, yeah, actually, you should add this, this, and this to your application because, I mean, it's kind of relevant. So I did. I added those because she, you know, told me to. It's always good to have people review it and to have people, like, look at it, even just to check for grammar mistakes or to check for punctuation. You want it to be as good as possible for this kind of, you know, thing so for this you know great opportunity to go teach in Japan so uh, then yeah you need your two recommendations you need two copies of your transcript I believe I think it's two yeah so you need two copies of your college transcript and I think like on it somebody you might have to if you haven't graduated yet you need like some kind of proof that you will graduate in the fall not sure I don't remember exactly how that is but yeah so then you also need copies of your passport. Uh, I already had one, so it was no problem. Some people don't have it yet, so they need to have, like, proof that they are applying for a passport. So, anyway, you need to do that, too. And then, uh, something else, something else. So, yeah, so just be careful. Make sure all of these things are collected and made sure that they're into an envelope together. So, don't forget anything, okay? And then put it into an envelope, send it off to your nearest embassy consulate area. Mine was Chicago, I think. So, I sent it off to there. And then, uh, you wait. You wait to hear back from Jet if you have gotten through just the application process. Some people don't for whatever reason, I don't know why, but some people don't get through the application process. And I don't know why. Some people, I feel like, don't get through and I think it's really unfair. Like, there will be people who study Japanese all four years and who have, like, experienced Japan before, but they won't get through. And I don't know why. I have no idea how the application process gets chosen with people. It's very strange. And then, same thing with the interview. So once you get through the application process, you get a chance for an interview. And uh, I had to go to Chicago to go do my interview. For those of you who don't know, Chicago from Kentucky is a long drive. I should not have driven. I should have gone by plane. I highly regret that I didn't go by plane. So, if you want to go do an interview, 
I recommend going the way that is the less least amount of stress. If somebody can drive you there, all right, but don't drive yourself there for many, many hours and be stressed out in city traffic and lose your way, lose your way again, finally find your hotel, pass out. <laughs> My story right there. <sighs> it was just, it was just a pain. And then when you get there to the interview, here's the thing, I'm gonna give you like homework to do before you go to your interview actually. Um, re like have copies of all the things you sent out and keep them with you. Um, because they're going to ask you questions about your application and they're going to ask you questions about your statement of purpose and they're going to ask you questions about your Japanese that you said you had on your application form and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it behooves you to review all the stuff you sent out before you go to your interview. That way you're like, oh no, everything I said is true. Like they're not going to catch you backtracking or lying even though I feel like I don't feel like anybody lies at their interview I feel like they just forget about what they put on their application and then it kind of feels like that they've been lying for some reason so keep all of your application stuff keep your statement of purpose copies and so you can review before you go to your interview now the interview um some people have like half an hour interviews. Some people have one hour interviews. Some people have five judges who do rapid fire questions and are very like aggressive. Then some people have what I had, which was like three people, two Western people. I think they were American, but I'm not entirely sure. And then there was a Japanese man there and it was a very laid back interview. It lasted about 35 ish, 40 ish minutes. It wasn't a full 45, I feel like, but it was, it was a while. Um, so, they asked me questions about my application. They asked me questions about my statement of purpose. They asked me about this and that, the other. Um, then the Japanese guy asked me questions in Japanese. And I answered like a few of them, but not very well. And that was fine because I put on my application, I am a basic beginner. I know very, very, very little Japanese. So it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. You don't need to know Japanese to be an ALT. So you're fine. You do not need to know it. Um, to be a CIR, where coordinator, a coordinator of international relations, yes, you need to be fluent to be a CIR and a sports trainer person. I think you need to know some Japanese for that too, but you don't need to know it for ALT. Uh, there's rumors that'll circulate every once in a while, like you must know Japanese. No, you really don't. You just don't. I knew one guy who was a photography major who'd never come to Japan, who'd never spoken a lick of Japanese in his life and he came to Japan and was an ALT for five years so it could you know it just you don't need to know it it's okay so I did my interview with Japanese and then they asked me some questions that were kind of strange and I didn't really think about them until later one of them was uh so one of them was if your school that you go to asks for you to come on a Sunday that they're having a school event would you go and my answer was, well, honestly, and this is just honestly, I said, I think that having a social life is kind of important abroad. So if I had made plans before and they didn't tell me this was a last minute request, I might say no, because I don't, I don't want to have my life become my entire, or, or my job become my entire life. I want to be able to, you know, go out and see Japan. I want to make friends and so on. So I said, and then at the same time, let's say that it's not a last minute request. Let's say that they caught me before I made any plans. And yes, I would go and I would gladly go see my students, you know, on a Sunday, if it was like a cultural festival or something. So I gave them that answer and they kind of were like, oh, man, man. and they wrote a whole bunch of notes. What I didn't realize at the time was this was a workaround way of saying like, are you Christian? Like, would you go to church on Sunday and stuff like that? Because it's not a big deal, but it's just like, you know, am I religious? They can't ask that straight out. So that was like a workaround way to ask. And I didn't think about that. But also, it does happen a lot here in Japan. Their, their schools will ask you like, hey, are you going to be working on Sunday? Because we want to do something on Sunday. Can you come? My answer is usually no. After you get done with um, your interview, you'll feel pretty stressed and you'll feel kind of empty inside like oh my god that was a horror but then you go home and then you have to wait in limbo for a few months until you get told oh hey yes you made it through or you didn't or you're on an alternate list 
uh, I actually got alternate listed. I was what we call alt list. I got put on that list because of reasons I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes there are too many applications and too many like interviews that happen and so you're just put on a wait list in case somebody backs out or something happens and then you can get a spot. So I got alt listed for about two weeks and I felt really bad. I was like, oh, I don't have a backup plan. I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't go on to Jet Program. Luckily, two weeks later, I got in and I was so excited. I was Oh, I felt so great. So after that, you're going to do a health check, which means you'll go to a hospital and you'll get your, like, you'll do like a basic just chest exam, your ears, yeah, a sound, like your ear check, eye check, and so on and so forth. They'll do blood draws. They'll test for a tuberculosis. It's apparently a problem here. And um, yeah, it's like that. So after all that happens, then you're going to go to the jet conference pre-flight conference which will be mm, July end of July and you'll do that for a day and then you get on your plane and you come to Japan so that's how you get onto the jet program I often get the the question what's the jet program like and I don't know how to answer that without like getting really complicated and long-winded uh, every placement is different. Every situation is different. You'll hear this a lot if you get onto JET. E-S-I-D. Every situation is different. So, for me, uh, I ended up in the Inaka countryside area of Japan. I ended up in Itakoshi, Ibaraki-kin. So, thus, Ibaraki JET. Um, I lived there for three years. I really enjoyed it at the time. Uh, and it was, it was a really great laid-back country place. Uh, it wasn't loud or anything, so it was, I don't know, it was stress-free in a lot of ways that I feel like city life for me at that time would have been too much for me, you know. But every place is different. Every person is different. So some people get their placements in the countryside after having lived in a big city and they feel very, uh, oh, what's the word? They feel very, like, they're missing out on stuff and they feel like, oh, I'm, I should be somewhere else. This doesn't really fit me, you know, and I'm sorry. It just, it, you know, you, but you got to learn to love where you live and you've got to make connections and get out a part, be a part of the community and start learning about your city and start getting out and just being a part of it. Uh, yeah, but every situation is different. Some people, like me, I had two junior high schools, an elementary school, and a kindergarten I went to sometimes. So I would switch out the junior high schools every month. Uh, and then the elementary school I would go to once a month, maybe, but maybe not, maybe once every couple months. It depended on the schedule. And then the uh, preschool I'd go to just every once in a blue moon. Some people have four or five different high schools that they have to go to, or maybe only three but they'd have to switch out every week or every other day. And, you know, so some people would have really tough schedules and some people wouldn't have very tough schedules. And then for high school, I feel like for high school, there's not, you don't have to follow textbooks most of the time. So you can just make games and make your own conversation classes. Whereas for me with junior high school, I had to follow textbooks to the letter. I had to go with every single lesson and do activities and things for specific chapters and specific grammar points, which felt kind of constricting at the time. Uh, and then for, you know, high school, they had a little bit looser that way, but they had way more, I feel like more placements that were just the, this high school, that high school, this high school, so that high school, oof, and it's one person. So, you know, Every situation's different. Every kind of schedule is different. Uh, every supervisor is different. Some supervisors know English really well. Some supervisors don't know English at all. And you have to use emails a lot and uh, translator apps on your phones. And it, yeah, it, it can be a bit of a work that way. And yeah, that was fun. Uh, so yeah, so how is it gonna be on Jet? You really don't know until you get there. Um, so a lot of people are under the impression that they'll get to choose where they go. No, you don't really get to choose. You can put on your application, you can put, oh, I'd like to go here, I'd like to go here. But let me go ahead and tell you, if you put Tokyo, 
you're probably not going to end up in Tokyo. It's very, 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 very rare that people actually get that placement for Tokyo. Tokyo has increased the amount of jets that they are sending over, which is great, but still, that increase is like maybe a hundred and over, I don't even know how many thousands of people get into jet, so, eh, good luck, but you might not get into Tokyo. Uh, yeah, so, you might end up in Osaka, Kyoto, though, you might end up in, you know, another big city in Japan, which would be also pretty cool. I like Kyoto, and I like Osaka, personally, so, but, yeah, you don't know until you get here, and you don't know how it's gonna be until you get here, uh, so, yeah, that's all I can really tell you. But I loved it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of work, but it wasn't... I felt like it was a good amount for, like, especially a job straight out of uh, college that you got to experience, oh, okay, going to work from 9 to 5, having to, you're, you know, having to deal with, like, an office environment and becoming a little bit more aware of professionalism and professional work ethics and things like that. So yeah, Jet Program. I really enjoyed it. I think you will enjoy it too if you ever want to apply. If you have any questions about Jet Program or whatever, you can comment here or you can go to my blog and comment as well. Either way. Um, both okay. So if you ever want to talk about it, I'll talk about it, I guess. So yeah, uh, this has been Jessica from Kentucky to Tokyo, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.